Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Welcome to the Mind Your Autistic Brain talk show. Today, we're gearing up to talk all things burnout warning signs. Is burnout creeping up on you was my question this week. So often I hear, I'm not sure I think I'm in burnout or I've been in burnout for so long, but we're going to be talking about specific warning signs today and some traps because there's some restoration traps and there's some illusions that you could be falling into in addition to the chronic cycle burnout loop. So I'm gonna help you identify if you might be a burned out autistic newbie and if this is you and maybe what some of these symptoms are that may be aligning with what's going on in your world. So stick around. Hi, I'm Carol Jean, late identified autistic ADHD human and your host of the Mind Your Autistic Brain talk show and burnout restoration unveilers community. You're about to experience the new way to thrive as a neurodistinct brain and body by getting off the chronic cycle burnout loop for good. By unveiling your authentic self, defining what thriving feels like for you, knowing your burnout signpost, so those top 20 burnout warning signs are a thing of the past and stepping into your best life as the creator and leader you are meant to be. Get ready because this is where we go against the mainstream. Say no to outdated self-care tips and we say yes to who we are in order to create an energized, authentic, peaceful, and harmonized world. Welcome to Mind Your Autistic Brain. Wow, I love getting started. My week is Tuesday afternoon. And for the month of May, every Tuesday at three o'clock, you can join me live on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. Jump in the comments, say hi. This is all about community and connection because it's usually by Tuesday afternoon that we start to kind of feel it. We spent the weekend restoring, unplugging. We hit Monday and Tuesday. We are energized. So you usually still have a little bit of energy and you're still doing all right. But Tuesday afternoon, if you're not, let me know. I want to hear about it. Because um, it's usually like Wednesday and Thursday. And it's like all of a sudden it's like, I can't wait to get to Friday. So we're going to dig in and we're going to talk about some of these warning signs. But I kind of want to give you an update because last week was my birthday. I celebrated. I had my friend Jason Levowitz from XXO Connect on with me. We had so much fun last week just talking all things community because he is the king of community and connection. And it was so nice to spend my birthday with you guys and with Jason. And we had some free giveaways. So if you haven't had a chance to, you know, listen to that show and kind of hear some things about what XXO provides because I'm there every Thursday afternoon having conversations all around communication, burnout, and everything neurodistinct. But I mentioned that I kind of had a rough afternoon because I had had to head to the vet with my beautiful baby Easter Lily. So I want to give you an update. Here's a picture. Oh my goodness, look at her. <laughs> she if you're watching, you could totally see this. If you're catching the replay on podcast, you're going to have to uh, hop on over to Instagram. I will share this one in my stories today over at Mind Your Autistic Brain. This is Easter Lily, and she is doing really well from her surgery. This is her hilarious soft cone, an inflatable cone. Guys, I'd never heard of this, and the vet said, oh, you got to get an inflatable cone for her um, because she needs to be able to see, and it's soft because she had had that uh, surgery on her lip. So she's doing well, guys. She is all back to her bouncy little self. We're still waiting to get the results from the lab. So, you know, my heart's still kind of hanging there. So I'm sure those of you who have fur babies understand what I'm talking about. So I just want to give you a little update on her. She's doing well. And some life updates. Oh my goodness. So this Friday, my baby is graduating from high school. I am so, so very proud of him because several months ago, he said, mom, I have written so many 2,500 and 3,000 word essays and I haven't gotten a single solitary uh, scholarship offer. I said, hang in there. It's okay. You're going to get 
the one that you're looking for. He got accepted to the University of Colorado and he is going to be in the business management program and he goes to boot camp next month uh, for Army Reserve. So we got a lot happening. We got a lot happening in our world. So we're going to be having a big graduation um, party for him Friday night and just all those fun life events. And Josh and I are packing up and we're on the move again, guys. <laughs> we sold our property here in Kentucky and we will be moving south back to Alabama and we are going to be building a house yet again. Um, but this time we're, we're going to lay down some roots. I, I told him, I said, look, last time that you haul and I are coming face to face, uh, packing and moving. I'm, I'm, I love them, but I'm tired of packing in you haul boxes. So uh, fingers crossed, you know, this, this will be a, a place where I can feather my nest as they say. So as we are kind of still sharing some of the wonderful articles on the Mind Your Autistic Brain Brain Dump blog, this week I had Lex Harvey Bryn, who is a wonderful workplace advocate. She wrote a beautiful article all about workplace and accommodations and accessibility what that means to her and some of the experiences. She really highlights some of, the, I think, the things that that we all would like more, more businesses and just more people to know in the workplace around accommodations and accessibility and, and what that means for being inclusive and, and creating spaces of psychological safety and belonging. So hop on over to the Brain Dump blog later today and check that out. Um, I also have one of our wonderful advocates from the Shine a Light campaign, somebody I absolutely adore, and it's Margot Wask. They own a company called Retrophiliac. And let me pop that up here on the screen so you know how to spell it. It's R-E-T-R-O-P-H-I-L-I-A-C. And I love to highlight and talk all about our autistic owned businesses. And Margot is autistic. She owns a phenomenal business. And I want to show you what I ordered. And it came yesterday. So how perfect is the timing on this? So she makes these beautiful pens and she has stickers. I ordered and it took me forever to pick out the one I wanted. She was so funny. She was like, Carol Jade, you're hilarious. So I've got the autistic pen and it's got a little outline of the rainbow all around it. I am going to be putting this on and wearing it, but I didn't want to take it out. I wanted you guys to be able to see the darling packaging that, that they send it in. Margot just does such a great job. And um, I've got these great stickers that Margot also makes. And I love this. It says, autistic is not a bad word. These are vinyl stickers. Autistic is not a bad word. Heck no, it's not a bad word. It's an amazing word. It's a word, especially in late identified life, that gives us freedom. It gives us identification. And, you know, I hear so often from parents and educators, you know, we don't want to label our child. And I'm like, I could have used with, a, I could have, you know, used a few labels growing up. It, it really would have helped me understand more about maybe myself, where I am in the world. So as we move in today, and I, please go get, go get some things from Margot. The link for her shop is down in the show notes. So go check it out. She's, they have got all kinds and her pronouns are they, them. Um, they have got all kinds of amazing, amazing pens and they are so good. I really had a hard time choosing. So it took me a little bit. Um, Margot sends beautiful packaging. You get this darling card all about their work and, and who they are in the world. And I love this. Margot says, I am passionate about self-advocacy and activism. I fight for the rights of disabled people like myself. I strive to increase the visibility and resources available for disabled small business owners and self-employed people. So Margot, cheers and congratulations. And I am just tickled to death and loving my pen. I cannot wait to wear it. I'll be sporting it. Now I got to figure out where I'm going to put my autistic is not a bad word sticker. I think I need to figure out uh, a good place to display that for sure. So today we're talking all about burnout warning signs, specifically helping you identify if you could possibly be in burnout, what that might look like for you. So here's some interesting stats. So let me kind of blow this up on the screen because I know this is probably a little bit small there. So if you are, and let me, add, here we go. So currently, 2023 burnout statistics show 84% of millennials. So that means if you're born between 1981 and 1996, you're a millennial. So millennials are saying that they've experienced burnout at their current job. 88, 84% more of them, millennials are saying that they experience burnout at their current job compared to 77% of all other respondents. 
Now, folks, we know neurodiversity at work. They're like, mm, we got to make sure we create neurodiversity and we want to bring in neurodiverse folks. And we all tell them, hey, we're already here. It's like the Horton hears the who. We are here. We are here. So in that 84% of, of millennials and that 77% of just all respondents, we're included in that. Nearly half of millennials say that they have left a job specifically because they felt burned out compared to 42% of all respondents. And we know 80 to 85% of our autistic adult population is either unemployed or underemployed. And I think we can all probably agree that a lot of that has to do, some of it, not all of it, some of it has to do with the fact that we experience burnout and we are either forced to leave or we have to take a leave of absence. I know in my past careers, I've had to take a leave of absence due to burnout. So this is impacting our financial livelihood. Um, and when we talk about our basic human needs, financial security and stability is one of those things. And if we're in chronic cycle burnout, you know, burnout is impacting our ability to be able to thrive and, and bring income in the way that, that we would like to. 67% of workers report that stress and burnout at work have increased since the pandemic. Oh, I am so sure because so many things changed. Um, so recently I have been doing a lot of in-person presentations and, and um, workshops. So for the last two Fridays in a row, not only was I doing it in person, I was doing it out of town. So I was traveling and that's the first time that I've done this much traveling and presentation work in the last two weeks since the pandemic. And I'll tell you, ooh, those burnout signposts, the place where you notice it first before you feel it, because when you, by the time you feel it, that warning sign is, is too late. It's over and done with. You're feeling it. You're already in it. But fortunately, I was able to pick up on some signposts. So two weeks ago on Friday, I did a presentation uh, about an hour away and it was at a high school for middle school and high schoolers and they did it in the gym. Guys, you want to talk about sensory nightmare. The gym was really loud. They had the brightest lights. Those suckers hummed as we are walking through to get to the gym. It was like noisy chaos. You can smell stuff. So, you know, when I got home from that presentation after, you know, riding in the car there, lunch with the, the people that invited me and then driving back home. I got home, I changed clothes, I sat down and I fell asleep. I haven't done that in a very long time. Well, the same thing happened this past Friday. I had a presentation early in the morning that had to go out of town, had some meetings, had another presentation and I came home and I crashed. And I was like, oh my goodness, my sensory system hasn't been used to this level of input because I've been able to curate my environment because I've done so much presentation work just here in my office and in the studio. So, you know, these are a lot of things that post pandemic and, and as everybody is either working hybrid or, or you're still working from home, or maybe you've been called back into the office, we're all experiencing more burnout because our nervous systems have regulated. We've come down in our own environments. So when we're put back out into the world where it is, you know, a lot of demand and a lot of sensory input. And because our, our brains don't filter all of that out necessarily, we take it all in and process all of it. That's exhausting. You know, I talk about so often, uh, I, uh, I, I didn't have my face up here and I've been talking and I'm sure you're like, what in the heck girl, you can't see. And all we can do is look at this piece of paper. <laughs> well, at least the folks on the podcast, you can hear the voice. Um, but when we're talking about those kind of things, you know, that's what we're experiencing right now. We got to really have that conversation. You know, this is this is a big part of, of what we experience in the world. Um, so as we're talking about some of these things today, I just wanted to bring up those statistics because I think it's really important just to know, you know, we're in a place in the world where also remember back in September, October, we had a lot of financial insecurity globally. We're looking at increasing cost. We're looking, you know, at how the housing market is changing. So we've got all of these things happening and that impacts our stress level and that impacts burnout. So today we're going to dive in and we're going to talk about 
our burnout. And we're going to talk about, and I'm going to try and make this where you guys can see. There we go. Our burnout warning signs. Because we're going to dig into this and we're going to, I'm going to help you identify if you could be experiencing burnout. Because, you know, sometimes we come up with a whole lot of reasons about why we feel a certain way that we feel, especially if we have co-occurring health conditions. I know for me, it's like, okay, is it my pots? Did I get into something? Do I have, you know, is it an MCAS thing? Um, is it a hypermobility? And we had some interesting conversation last week in our XXO room Um one of our members is reading Disjointed. I don't know if you guys have read it. I've read some of it. I haven't read all of it yet. I actually really need to go back and, and reread and, and dig into the whole thing. Um, but there's so many things, you know, when we have these co-occurring health conditions and you can't say, hey, it's just that or it's burnout specifically. It's environmental. You know, it's my work or my family or relationships. It's all of it together, guys. It's, it, we can't separate these out. So we're going to go through our burnout warning signs. And I talk about this from a minds of all kinds perspective, because I like to highlight, you know, what is, what is neurodistinct burnout? What is neuromajority burnout? Where do we share a lot of similarities? And, but where are the differences and how might this be showing up for you? So here's kind of what to expect today. So we're going to be covering the symptoms of burn for the burnout newbie, kind of help you figure out, Hey, if I'm experiencing some of these things, is it me or not? Defining burnout from minds of all kinds. Burnout restoration traps. Now, this is really important. We're going to talk about the chronic cycle burnout loop, but we're going to talk about the burnout restoration illusion trap. This is especially for those of us who have been you know, on that chronic cycle burnout loop for quite a while. And we're going to talk about the top burnout warning signs because I have a lot of really great data and information that's going to help you sort of figure out, hmm, am I in that 100% of people that say this in, in Carol Jean's research or am I in this 80%? Am I experiencing all of these maybe? Because, you know, you could be experiencing all of them and hey, I, I can say I have experienced all of them. Um, so here we go. Here's symptoms of the burned out newbie. Listen to these and see how many of these you can identify with. Just make a mental note. Number one, here we go. You know you are exhausted almost all the time, but you don't have a clear way to get out of it. Like you're feeling tired, you know you are, but you're just not sure how to get out of it. Like you've tried a couple of things, but it just, you just don't know. But you're exhausted almost all the time. You're scaling back on demands and focusing on rest every weekend, and it helps for Monday and Tuesday, but by the middle of the week, you're right back where you started and you're just like, when is Friday going to get here? When is Saturday going to get here? I just need to go home from school, from work, whatever it is that you're doing. You're using at least two or three self-care tips, and I put those in quotes here, self-care tips, each week and trying new ones, but nothing feels sustainable. That's the thing I hear most often. It's like, I'm trying all this self-care stuff. I'm like doing all of the things that I read online. I'm, you know, I'm unplugging from social media. Um, I'm not booking things on my calendar as often, or I'm actually saying no. I hear people go, I'm saying no. I'm actually like using the word no. I'm trying to get out of the yes and people pleasing, but I'm still tired. I'm still exhausted. It just, and none of this feels sustainable. I can't say no to everything all the time. I'm starting to lose my relationships. People are starting to wonder, you know, how do I do this? Okay, here's another one. Those fun things that you love to do aren't feeling fun anymore, but more like chores. And that can feel really depressing sometimes. You know, so those special interests, the things that you love to do, the things that you normally would do, and they kind of light you up, you know. For me, it's it's painting. And I haven't really done that lately because I've been busy doing other things. But I noticed I'm like, you know, hey, since I've been doing a lot of this traveling, I've really kind of been depleted the last two Fridays. I really need to plan an art day because that really brings in some creative energy to me. That's a self-care. That's part of creative rest. And, you know, I talk about all the seven forms of rest other than sleep, but then I also do a big dive into sleep. So when those fun things that you love to do, they're just not feeling fun anymore. That can also be one of those symptoms that shows up in your life that you might be experiencing burnout. Okay, 70% or more, and we can kind of gauge that 70% a little bit. You can kind of chunk it out, right? So 70% or more of your energy is spent on doing things others expect or that you have to do to survive. 
I can't tell you how many times, and maybe you can relate to this too, when I would look at my life, look at my schedule, look at my day, and all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, uh, it, I have, I felt it was like a lot of have tos. I have to do that because I have to pay the bills or I have to do laundry or I won't have any clean clothes. I have to cook food or my kids won't eat, you know, or they're going to destroy my kitchen. And then it's like 10 times more work because they messed it up. So, you know, those survival things. And when we get in that survival mode, boy, that's a big drainer, but that's, that's also a symptom that you can be a burned out newbie. You, you could be in burnout. You don't feel connected to your authentic self. You're giving everyone else what they want and need instead of what you need and that and needs and things that feel authentic to you. You know, this was a big one. Um, when I had to stop and reflect, am I doing things that I enjoy? Am I doing things that feel authentic in alignment with me, things that I value or Am I really just worrying about and making sure everybody else is getting their wants and needs met? And if I have a little left over at the end of the day, then I'll, I'll do something for myself or somehow I have to earn it. Like I have to do things for everybody else before I can do them for myself. You know, I always, I always think about that uh, airplane, you know, put the mask on yourself before you put it on your child. It's, it's we're totally right there in this moment, right? Like we're doing it for everybody else, but Sometimes we're also running on that belief that we have to earn it or that we can't do it until everybody else gets what they need first, especially as, as the moms or head of household or, or, you know, however that may fall in your world. Okay. It feels like you understand what to do to get out of burnout. I mean, intellectually from a concept, you can understand what you're supposed to do to get out of burnout, but it still doesn't work. You're missing something hidden. You, you know, you know, you get it like intellectually, you get what you're supposed to do to get out of burnout. You get that it's, it's chronic unmet needs. You know, you got to get a need met, but you're just missing something you're not sure. And I'm actually going to have some solutions for you on that one. So stick around. You never get out of burnout long enough to really feel good. Like you feel like, oh yeah, I get out of that. I, I feel like I'm getting out of burnout, but I never really feel like as good as I think I can or that I know I can. And living the authentic life you know is yours. Like, you know it. You can envision it. You you maybe not even can envision it, but there's just something in you that tells you, I know that, that there's something else out there. So let's define burnout for minds of all kinds. So let's kind of talk about first what neurodistinct burnout is. And this is my definition. This is one that I have crafted over the last seven years. Um, I started this journey nine years ago. Oh my goodness, guys, I just turned 49. So we're actually entering a decade here. <laughs> we're actually entering the decade. And I'm actually, will this fall will be in year four of burnout restoration, where I haven't had burnout shutdown or meltdown since I hit this restoration point. And we're going to talk about some of the traps, uh, the loop that you can get stuck in, but especially that illusion trap. Uh, because I fell into it for a really long time. So to kind of make sure we're all on the same page with this, here is my definition of neurodistinct burnout. So an autistic ADHD ND burnout is when our needs consistently go unmet for a sustained period, period of time without sufficient recovery periods from stressors like sensory overwhelm, masking and or camouflaging, you know, the professional level, co-occurring physiological conditions, and a lack of needed support. The result can include recurring meltdowns, shutdown, withdrawal, feelings of disconnection from self and others, increased and or decreased sensory experience, you can have both, suicidal ideation, suicidal action, and a temporary loss of skills and abilities in all areas of life that take time to recover. The loss of some skills can be permanent or only return to a limited degree if the restoration is not sufficient or if a burnout is a chronic cycle burnout. ND burnout is not the same as a neuromajority burnout, is different from depression, and is usually not a result of one specific co-occurring health condition, such as chronic fatigue syndrome, et cetera. 
So I hope that kind of clears up and gives you um, a definition and a framework, a foundation to understand what neurodistinct burnout is. So now let's talk about neuromajority burnout. So if that's if that's us, you know, and how we experience it, how does neuromajority, how do, how do the other folks that have the slower brains <laughs> <laughs> that don't drain them and sensory systems that don't exhaust them when they go into spaces that are, are not curated for them, like the gym uh, at a high school. Um, so neuromajority burnout. So per the World Health Organization, um, they have a really great article around burnout. So burnout as defined by the ICD-11 is as follows. So burnout is a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed. It is characterized by three dimensions, feelings of energy depletion or exhaustion, increased mental distance from one's job or feelings of negativism or cynicism related to one's job and reduced professional efficacy. So essentially, and, and there's a lot of adjustment that's happened since this came out. Um, even in neuromajority burnout, we're looking at it here. It's presented specifically work-related in the ICD-11. However, a lot of um, consultants in, in the work that's happening now says, you know, hey, we we recognize that burnout isn't just work-related. You know, it, it follows you home. It, it lives with you wherever you are. Um, but this is just sort of kind of giving you some insight into that as to where how it's defined. And I think we can relate to um, the energy depletion and exhaustion element of that. So I think what we have to do is also look at the symptoms of burnout for all neurotypes. Like what is the overlap? Where do we share commonalities in our burnout experience? Because when we're trying to identify our warning signs, one of the ways that we kind of get to that identification um, that we're experiencing or that we're in burnout is how we can relate to other people as they're describing it, if they've identified it themselves. So here's some common thread points around burnout um, experiences. You know, this is the warning signs. So emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion, check. Anxiety or an elevated sense of worry more than your norm. And I say more than your norm because, you know, sometimes that's just sort of part of who we are in, in our fabric based on our life experience. You know, for us, we might be ang more anxious and things like that. So issues falling or staying asleep. So burnout can cause a lot of sleep disruptions. It's a really big impact area. Trouble with your memory. So working memory, short-term memory, long-term memory, and a lot of those long-term things are, are also impacted and working memory also impacted by your sleep. Uh, poor job performance, like executive dysfunction headaches, fatigue, feelings of hopelessness. So all of those are things that we share in common across our neurotype when we experience burnout warning signs. So warning sign research highlights. So I have, um, with all of my unveiling method members, when you come into the program, um, I have a a, a research paper that I'm putting together. And so I collect information so that we can start to find what are the threads? What are the things so that we can help? I can help as many people as possible to get out of burnout for good. So here's some of the warning sign research highlights. So 100% of participants, 100%, everyone that has taken this says they experience a loss or decrease in skills or abilities. That's one of the, the warning signs, 100% across the board. This is what everyone is experiencing. So I'm hoping that this is kind of helping you start to identify, oh, you know, because sometimes we got that imposter syndrome thing coming in, like, oh, I can't possibly experience in burnout because it doesn't look like so-and-so's or, you know, I just need to push through. I'm going to be okay. Maybe it's just because I didn't get enough sleep last night. So, but you tell yourself every day the same thing for weeks. Um, so the other 100% response was sensory sensitivities are heightened. Now, here's something really important to recognize about burnout. So our sensory system is impacted during burnout and our sensory profile shows up different in burnout than it does in Thrive. So for us as neurodistinct humans, we may have sensory sensitivities, let's say, you know, like, oh my gosh, Josh is chewing or drinking. Like he drinks this water bottle, it drives me insane. <laughs> but most of the time I can like it doesn't bother me. I can kind of tune it out. But if I'm tired or if I haven't had enough sleep or when I was in burnout and that was happening, it's like, I want to just like squeeze your face, right? Like you feel that 
you had, don't have that same threshold. You're more irritable. So what may bother me all the time, it's the degree to which I experience it that can change in my sensory system. So knowing some of those things. All right. So here's some of the 80% things. So 80% of people say that they experience brain fog. I'm surprised that wasn't hundred percent, but not, it wasn't 80%. So difficulty uh, maintaining focus. Emotions appear to increase or decrease sort of that emotional regulation piece, because when you don't have a lot of energy, you're not regulating your emotions as well. You kind of maybe get snappy or crabby or I'm um, in perimenopause. And, you know, last week was also that time. And uh, oh, we I'm telling you what that hormonal element to burnout maintenance and management has been an interesting piece. So we're definitely going to do something on that. Um, we also have self-care September this year coming up and I'm doing, this will be the third year and I'm going to be hosting a self-care September summit all around women's health, autistic women's health guys. So be sure to stick around it and hear more about that uh, coming up in August. We'll start sharing all the information around that. So here's some of the other 80% warning signs that people are saying, you know, hey, 80% of us have experienced this in burnout. Autistic traits feel more pronounced or bigger than usual. Upset stomach, nausea, constipation, GI distress was another big one. Feeling agitated, out of control, or angry. Now, as, as a woman who's also in perimenopause, that feeling kind of out of control and angry has just also been something that's that's showing up in my world. And I'm like, I know it's not burnout. I know it's hormonal. But at the same time, if I'm not careful, then what I have going on with my hormones can lead to burnout. So I'm, I'm being really aware of those things for myself right now because I'm like, I have gotten to this place that is so wonderful. I, I want to stay here. Um, so let's talk about these restoration traps. So I talked about some of the traps that you might be facing. And, and it could be that you're falling into these and thinking that you're in restoration, but you're not you're not. So let, let's kind of dive into this. So I have the five levels of spicy and my book is coming out August the 1st for how spicy is your burnout. And it is coming out in all different versions of accessibility formats from open dyslexic font to uh, video with live captions so that you can lip read and, and make sure that you're getting this information. So that's coming out August the 1st. And here is the five levels of how spicy is your burnout. Level one is a poblano pepper. Level two is a jalapeno pepper. Level three is a cayenne pepper. Habanero pepper is a level four. And ghost pepper is the level five. That is the spiciest of all spicy. I'm not going to get into the definition of each one of these levels right now because we're just looking at, hey, am I actually in burnout? Am I experiencing these internal warning signs? Am I feeling it? But I wanted to kind of give you this visual and let you know what those five levels are because it goes into those the trap that we're talking about. So let me move in here and let's talk about the chronic cycle burnout loop. So for a lot of us in late identify life, we have experienced what I have defined as the chronic cycle burnout loop sometimes for decades. My very first burnout was at the age of six and that continued all the way into my early forties. So what is the chronic cycle burnout loop? So based on those five levels of spicy from a level one, meaning, oh, you know, I need a, I need a, you know, an hour or two to kind of recover from something that might've been stressful for me all the way up to I'm in a level five ghost pepper and, you know, I'm in the bed and I've needed to go to the bathroom for like three or four hours, but I just can't get up. And, you know, and I'm just staring off into space and I can't really focus or concentrate. I've got brain fog. So the chronic cycle burnout loop is when you cycle between levels of burnout with only brief periods of partial restoration between cycles. So for most of my clients, when they come to me in the unveiling method, um, or they hop in and they get that first steps to burnout restoration toolkit, and I'll share with you guys a little bit more about that at the end. It's self-paced if you just kind of want to jump in and, and find a place for you to get started. But the chronic cycle burnout loop, most people come to me and they've been circling between a level three, four, and five sometimes for decades. That's pretty much where I was as well. Um, and, and you just kind of move up and down those levels of spicy burnout because you can't recognize any of the unmet needs that you have because essentially burnout at its base definition is chronic and consistent unmet needs. 
And we have 30 basic human needs, folks. And, and to even learn that, I was like, holy cow, because, you know, we basically come up with most of them. It's like, oh, I need food. I need water. I need shelter. I need financial security. And I need to physically feel safe, right? We come up with like those top five. Well, there's 25 more. And when we can recognize what those are, and sometimes people are, when they take, when they go through and they do my uh, needs reflection form to identify, you know, what needs are unmet and which needs are met right now. They usually look at those physiological needs and go, oh, that's where I got to start. So we get caught thinking that we just have to worry about our, our physiological needs, our body needs. And that's not really getting us out of burnout because sometimes that isn't the greatest impact area for you because everybody has their own unique impact area. And that can keep you on that chronic cycle burnout loop where you're just circling those levels. But because you move up or down a little bit, it feels better. You've got these brief, these brief periods of restoration, but because your 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 foundational support of alignment and authenticity and your values and and your energy appraisal and your your boundaries around those aren't established, you get back into burnout pretty quickly because you quote unquote go life back to life as usual. So if this is kind of resonating with you, stick with me because the next one's really going to hit home. The burnout restoration illusion trap. So this was something that I identified for myself. And I, I was like, holy cow, I can't believe, you know, we all as humans have blind spots, but I went, wow, this is what's kept me on that chronic cycle burnout loop. So here's what the, my, how I define it and, and what the burnout restoration illusion trap is. So the burnout restoration illusion trap is when you begin to recover and are experiencing feeling good and having more energy than before. However, you don't realize that you have only moved down the spicy levels and are not yet fully restored. So if you were like me or, or you are experiencing circling those chronic cycle burnout loops, so maybe you might be a level two, three, or four, maybe you don't ever really hit that big five where you just start to completely shut down or, and lose all your abilities. Um, maybe you do circle that three, four, or five. That tends to be a bit more common in, in what I see. Um, but what happens is if you've been hanging out on a four level four spicy level for a long time and, and you do some things or some things change in your life. And so you start to feel better and you start to feel some restoration in your life. You start to feel some energy. You start to notice that you have a desire to do the things that you enjoy and they're actually fun again, but you've only moved down the spicy levels. You've only gone from a four to maybe a three or from a four to a two even, but you still haven't gotten out of burnout altogether and, and hit full restoration. And we'll do another episode when we go into, I want to go into what does thriving look like? Cause I couldn't define it. I didn't know. I didn't know what the elements of restoration were. So we're going to do an episode next week all around restoration and thriving. What does that look like? Cause if we're, defining today and, and helping you guys define, am I in burnout? You know, is this me? Am I experiencing this? Am I caught in one of these traps? Am I caught in the loop or am I caught in the, in the illusion trap, you know, and I'm still in burnout. So the unveiling method is, is my solution for this. This is how I help people go from burnout to thriving. And it's just a beautiful journey to see. And I want to share a, an opportunity that you guys can take today to get your first steps to burnout restoration. This is a self-paced toolkit. This and this is also as a companion that'll come with the book. Um, but the self-paced toolkit is available right now because I know so many people, excuse me, I got a call for. I know so many people are really struggling right now. Um, when we look at that burnout data that we have going on right now, I see so many people as, as we've come back to the world over the last year, you know, there's so much that's changed and there's so much our sensory system is now taking in our nervous system regulation. And, and people are really starting to feel that, especially with a lot of the financial things that have happened. So first steps to burnout restoration is a self-paced toolkit. It includes two of those core tools that I talk about to help you identify what are your unmet needs? What are your met needs? What are those 30 human needs all together? And your sensory profile reflection form to find out where is your sensory profile right now in burnout? What does it look like for you? Where are sensory elements draining you, your energy? And where are sensory things that are replenishing you? Because there's things in your sensory profile that are energizing you. And we want to capitalize on those. 
those are all of the things that that help take you to that next level to start moving into restoration. I hope that this has been really helpful for you. I hope this has been something that you know, if you weren't sure, you kind of suspected you might have been in burnout, but you you weren't 100% that maybe at the end of this today right now, you've got more clarity, you know, and you can definitely say, hey, I am for sure experiencing burnout. I'm not sure what spicy level I am yet. We will go into the spicy level as well. But I want you guys to be able to to know, hey, also, am I stuck in that chronic cycle loop? And might I be caught in that illusion trap? you know, because I'm feeling a little bit better. I think I'm, I'm out of burnout, but wow, maybe I'm just still level two or level three for the first time. Cause I was hanging out around four and five for so long. I didn't, this feels so much better, <laughs> but it's still not at the best I can possibly feel. And that was something that really surprised me because I thought I was feeling better and I fell into the solution trap and I thought, Ooh, I'm doing really well. And then boom, I'd be right back. And then as I started to progress and I was able to maintain and create the foundations, which the unveiling method takes you through foundations first to establish all of these things, how, how good I could feel and like to have sustained energy like I do now. Uh, so those last two Fridays and this hormonal thing is like, really, I had to check back in with my management maintenance phase. And, and that's, oh my gosh, just having that structure and knowing and having that guidance to, to be able to keep those things in check with myself, that has been my lifesaver. And I want to, I want to be able to give you that as well and, and have that be your lifesaver. Cause once you learn this, it, it's with you for life. You can't unlearn it. And that's the beautiful thing. And this is something that's, that's with you forever. Um, if you guys are enjoying the show, do me a favor. If you're on YouTube, please follow, please subscribe to the channel. If you are on Apple podcast, I would love it if you'd leave a review. Let me know what you're enjoying about the show, what stood out to you. If you're on Spotify, hey, I've got polls every week and questions for each one of those episodes. Jump in, ask a question. And hey, if you've got a burnout warning sign question this week, hop over to Instagram at Mind Your Autistic Brain. Shoot me a DM and let me know what your question is. I really want to help you identify if you are experiencing some of these burnout warning signs and, and help you start to get into that path of restoration because your life is yours. You're meant to thrive. And one of the things that I have heard and I've read online that just breaks my heart and I love to dispel it because I think it's really important. It, people think that as autistic or ADHDers that we're just doomed to experience some degree of burnout. That's just a given part of our life. And I'm here to disrupt that and to dispel that because it's, I have found that it doesn't have to be true doesn't have to be true. Yes, it was true for me for decades, but it is not. And and I've, I'm breaking the rules and I want to help you break that, that self-imposed perceived, I don't know, not self-imposed, but um, misperception because it is possible. And, you know, you guys hear me say, I love the word possibilitarian from Robin Sharma. So I'm always going to be a possibilitarian. So please make sure that you subscribe, that you follow, because that's going to help somebody else find the show. That's going to help somebody else find this information. They may be silently struggling because, you know, burnout right now is a greater impact pandemic than anything else that we've experienced um, in so many ways. And right now, this really is the silent, the silent epidemic that we're experiencing. Uh, Thanks so much for being here. Uh, thanks for all the great messages around Easter Lily. She's doing better. Uh, we've got our graduation this Friday and all kinds of wonderful things. So I'll check in with you next week. Join me live. Be part of the conversation in the community. And you know what? Part of the bonuses that you get when you join First Steps to Burnout Restoration is you get three free 30-day access to our Unveilers Restoration Support Community. And we have some amazing conversations in there. The fourth Sunday of every month, we meet for 90 minutes and just have a great time. All of our Unveilers, they're sharing our restoration journey and what's working, what's not working, and we help each other through it. So stay tuned, check in with us next week, and we're going to talk all about thriving. What does that look like? And what are those restoration markers? Where are we even headed on this journey? Take care, guys.